I've recently been working with fabric and decorative materials to create my compositions. Um, and, you know, I often will go to either the fabric store or search in my studio and just kind of rummage through things and find often, you know, a single item or a single material um, that acts as kind of a catalyst for a single painting or for, for multiple, multiple projects. So during my first year in the program, I was working with uh, primarily pink materials and these kind of um, objects that are considered to be typically feminine. Um, you know, everything from lace to uh, pearls, uh, diamonds, um, porcelain, things like that. Uh, and I was just trying to kind of play up this uh, kind of pretty princess aesthetic. Recently, I've made a transition um, to the inclusion of more unexpected factors in the work. So that might be a color, um, like, a, like a neon fabric, or even a texture. So also recently, um, through those pink paintings, I discovered um, these kind of strange interactions happening between the materials, or through the painting of those objects, uh, something unfamiliar would happen um, and you know I became interested in those moments of strangeness um, and often the the fabrics and the materials I'd find that they either you know alluded to body or flesh or they alluded even to something um, like landscape or even something ethereal something uh, heavenly and so I, I started trying to play up both of those aspects, both kind of the bodily and the, the landscape slash skyscape uh, in the paintings. So through, um, you know, manipulation of, of lighting and through the play of space in the paintings, um, at the time uh, that I was making these discoveries, I was also looking at uh, a number of the Italian masters, including uh, Tiepolo and Pontormo, looking at the way um, they would use, again, space, color palettes, and, and light in these uh, religious compositions um, to create a, a certain level of uh, ethereality. Um, and so I tried to capture that, uh, in particular in the large work behind me uh, titled Ascension. You know, an idea that I've, I've been interested in recently um, is you know, finding monumental moments within everyday objects um, or even uh, frivolous objects. Again, these sort of decorative materials or discarded wrappings. Um, and I, I think that a shift in, in scale helps, helps play that up. Again, definitely referencing or referencing these um, larger religious works by those, by those Italian uh, painters. Um, often in the work there is a kind of separation between either, you know, this world and that world um, through the creation, you know, of, of foreground and, and background. Um, and, you know, I like that that sort of play that happens um, between two spaces in the work. Often I will have, um, you know, a kind of obstruction in, in the foreground space and then uh, the viewer has to kind of move around that, that object or that piece of fabric to get what's behind. So often the thing that's back there is a sort of, um, you know, fleshy sort of uh, tantalizing teasing moment. Um, and I'm hoping that the viewer will kind of long to kind of pull back or step around these things that are in the foreground to, to get to those kind of juicy moments um, behind. So with the painting um, Neon Gullet, um, I was thinking about again these sort of uh, obst obstructions or even like a, a static um, that again, that the viewer has to kind of move through or get around to get to that moment in the center. And with that painting, I was really um, pushing, pushing the abstract and kind of playing up um, the kind of heavy uh, uh, 
level of information that's in the foreground um, as, a, again, a sort of like a delay to what's to getting to what's inside there. Um, or as a kind of a, even a, a distraction or even an, an intruder in the painting um, or something, or, or I, I guess I was interested in creating a level of discomfort there. I grew up, uh, I grew up in the household of, of a former dancer and I think that um, looking at her um, costumes from, from when she was young and when she was in the ballet um, has, has influenced my aesthetic uh, quite a bit. Um, so I think the, the you know, pretty pink materials definitely come from, from that. Um, but also I think there is also you know, this theatricality in the work um, that I think kind of echoes an idea of, of the stage or something um, over the top, certainly costume. Um, that's something that I'm always thinking about in the studio. So my, my source material um, comes from both uh, direct observation and photographs and um, imagination, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and I feel like the photographs, um, when I go to photograph one of my setups, um, the photograph helps me hone my composition. It helps me to be much more, much more deliberate, and it and it helps me find um, tiny moments within a setup um, and kind of, you know, zoom in on those, uh, may, and maybe find things that I wouldn't see right off with the with the naked eye. Um, and so, through kind of an amalgamation again of photo source through. Uh, direct observation source. I often have the materials, you know, sitting sitting next to me to remind me of kind of that initial um, uh, interaction I had with those things. Um, and through, you know, working out of my head, I kind of come to a happy medium for a painting. I often use uh, multiple multiple photos. Um, I'll take a you know, I'll, I'll do a long photo shoot and then I'll kind of uh, pick and choose a few, a few images to work from. I don't, I don't edit, edit the photographs. Um, all of the editing kind of happens um, in my head. Yeah. Yeah, I think that with these paintings, I'm looking to definitely transcend the genre of still life. Um, and transcend the ordinary. Um, and I don't really want them to be, or the paintings to be um, pin downable. <laughs> um, I want them to exist somewhere between, between genres, between worlds, even if still life is certainly the, the original inspiration. The materials are, are what I'm drawn to. Um, but then they become these vehicles for creating other worlds.